I'm Caitlin Collins at the White House, and this is CNN. Home of fake news. Uh, the former president, Donald Trump, had a lot to say tonight. Many, many of the things he said, of course, were abjectly false. Bullshit! I'm not going to ask you to fact check everything he said that was false, because we only have uh, a couple more hours. Oh, rim shot! What, what strikes you? Well, you know, look, I think one of the things off of the top was that we heard uh, former President Trump again say the election was rigged and talk about ballot stuffing. And look, the reality is the election was not rigged. Biden won by more than 7 million votes. And that ballot stuffing claim, that was also bogus. Here is Trump's false claim on this tonight. A lot of the people in this audience, and probably maybe a couple that don't, but most people uh, understand what happened. That was a rigged election, and it's a shame that we had to go through it. Can you publicly acknowledge that you did lose the 2020 let election? Me, let me just go on. If you look at True the Vote, they found millions of votes on camera, on government cameras, where uh, they were stuffing ballot boxes. So with all of that, I think it's a shame that what happened, I think it's a very sad thing for our country. Now, there is just no basis for this claim. It is a lie. We have heard Trump claim before that there was ballot stuffing by election workers in Georgia. CNN is fake news. There is no sign any illegality like this occurred on a large scale, and multiple former Trump officials, including Trump's own former Attorney General Bill Barr, have said there was not sufficient fraud to change the outcome of the 2020 election, Jake. Um, mm -hmm. Trump also claimed uh, he offered to send troops to the Capitol on January 6th, but uh, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi uh, turned him down. I, I don't think that's true. And I asked the Secretary of Defense, I said, I think you should recommend to Nancy Pelosi and to Congress, because they're the ones that control it, I would like to recommend 10,000 National Guardsmen to go and to police here, just in case. Trump also claimed uh, he offered to send troops to the Capitol on January 6th, but uh, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi uh, turned him down. I, I don't think that's true. In terms of security, that is a Nancy Pelosi issue, uh, which she does not seem to be held accountable for, which I find not surprising, frankly, because she is part of the Democratic Party. She should have known. She should have taken care of security. That is her job. Um, but, you know, that was a failure on her. But she'll blame it on Trump. <laughs> not surprising. Uh, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi uh, turned him down. I, I don't think that's true, Sarah. No, not the case. I mean, Trump has tried to blame former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi for the violence on January 6th. He's falsely claimed he ordered the National Guard to the Capitol. And I asked the Secretary of Defense, I said, I think you should recommend to Nancy Pelosi and to Congress, because they're the ones that control it, I would like to recommend 10,000 National Guardsmen. He's falsely claimed he ordered the National Guard to the Capitol. I didn't do it as an order. I did it as a suggestion. He's falsely claimed he ordered the National Guard to the Capitol. I didn't do it as an order. I did it as a suggestion. So here is Trump's attempt to rewrite history tonight. Chris Miller wrote a book, and he's a fantastic guy, and he was ready to go. They turned him down. If you look, the mayor of Washington, D.C., lovely lady, she said, we don't want it. We don't like the look. Nancy Pelosi said, oh, we don't like the look. If they would have had just, I offered them 10,000 soldiers. <laughs> I offered them 10,000 soldiers. I said, it could be 10, it could be more, but I offered them specifically 10,000 soldiers. Then on January 4th, a meeting took place in the Oval Office. It featured President Trump, his chief of staff, Mark Meadows, acting Defense Secretary Chris Miller, the Department of Defense chief of staff, Cash Patel, and the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mark Milley. President Trump, in that meeting, requested that up to 20,000 National Guard troops be made available for security at the Capitol for January 6, as the law requires him to authorize. At one stage of the process, the uh, local government was of the view that it did not need the National Guard's assistance. Who do you mean by the local government? The mayor? Yes. Um, so the, ma the mayor didn't call out the National Guard? At the at the beginning. Uh, what do you mean by the beginning? Well, you know, in the day or two leading up to the 6th. 
According to the former Capitol Police Chief, Stephen Sund, who will join us in a minute, the House Sergeant at Arms turned down his National Guard request prior to January 6th because, quote, I will never get this by Pelosi. Um, there was a number of um, requests. I went on January 3rd requesting uh, the National Guard from Paul Irving. That was the first request for the uh, for the National Guard. I then went to Mike Stinger, who's the Senate Sergeant Arms. Now, Paul Irving uh, is uh, politically appointed by Speaker Pelosi. Uh, he said specifically, quote, I don't like the optics. His concern for the optics, I believe, goes back to Pelosi's decision that, or um, statement that he, she referred to the federal agents in the uh, National Guard on the tra on streets of uh, America as stormtroopers. And I think she just didn't want the look of stormtroopers up on the hill. Here is the reality. The House Speaker is not in charge of Capitol security. Now, while the president can make National Guard troops available, it is important to note well, then it becomes the responsibility of Speaker Pelosi. She's in charge of security at the Capitol and also D.C. Mayor Bowser. She has the jurisdiction. They both have the authority at that point. Once the president authorizes the troops to be called up, they're the ones that have to deploy the troops to the Capitol and surrounding areas. The House Speaker is not in charge of Capitol security. That's the Capitol Police Board. CNN is fake news. Is yes, the Speaker of the House in charge of security at the Capitol? So you have the politically appointed Capitol Police Board that's put uh, in place by, you have uh, the Sergeant Arms that's put in place by Pelosi, you have the uh, Senate Sergeant Arms that's put in place by the uh, Senate leadership. The House Speaker is not in charge of Capitol security, that's the Capitol Police Board, which oversees the Capitol Police and at the time of the riot would have approved requests for National Guard assistance. Uh, but it was Paul Irving who immediately said, I'm going to run it up the chain, I'll never forget that, and run it up the chain. His chain of command ends at Speaker Pelosi. And I had to wait 71 minutes to finally get an approval at 2 at uh, 209 p.m. before I could finally reach out and start calling in federal assistance. And here is former acting defense secretary Chris Miller telling the January 6th committee that he was never given an order by Trump to have 10,000 troops ready to go to the Capitol on January 6th. To be crystal clear, there was no direct order from President Trump to put 10,000 troops to be on the ready for January 6th. Correct? No. Yeah, you're, that's correct. There was no direct, there was no order from the president. Did you authorize calling up the guard and then it became, as the chain of command went to Nancy Pelosi and to the mayor of D.C., Muriel Bowser? Did you, as required by law, authorize that? 100% uh, and attested to by many people and they turned it down. Nancy Pelosi turned it down. Mayor Bowser's written refusal, the communications between the leader of the Capitol Police and their chain of command to the DOD refusing our request to allow National Guards men and women to stage on January 4 and 5 before January 6. Did you both ask for the National Guard to be called up? Uh, without a doubt, Sean, uh, we've made that very clear, not just once, but on numerous occasions. Crystal clear, there was no direct order from President Trump to put 10,000 troops to be on the ready for January 6th. Correct? No. Was, yeah, you're, that's correct. There was no direct, there was no order from the president. Did Donald Trump a day before, on January 5th, tell his Secretary of Defense, Christopher Miller, to request 10,000 guardsmen to protect the Capitol and other government offices. So here's what we found from Miller on a sworn testimony. On the afternoon of January 5th, I received a call from the president in connection with a rally by his supporters that day at Freedom Plaza. The president asked if I was watching the event on television. I replied I had seen the coverage of the event. He then commented that they were going to need 10,000 troops the following day, unquote. All right, to then Secretary of Defense, uh, Christopher Miller. I had a meeting with President Trump on the 3rd of January concerning some international threats. And at the very end, he asked if there were any requests for National Guard support, and I informed him of Mayor Bowser's request. Mr. Miller, to, be, to clarify that point, did you tell the president about the mayor's request, or did President Trump ask if there were requests? He asked if there were requests. What was the president's response to you with regard to the request made by Mayor Bowser? Fill it and do whatever was necessary to protect the uh, demonstrators uh, and uh, that were executing their constitutionally protected rights. 
So Jake, as you can see, these claims by Trump about January 6th, also false. On January 3rd, you informed the president that Mayor Bowser requested National Guard support. And according to page 11 of your written statement, the president said to give the mayor the support she requested, correct? Yes. Uh, it's crystal clear there was no direct order from President Trump to put 10,000 troops to be on the ready for January 6th, correct? No. Yeah, you're, that's correct. There was no direct, there was no order from the president. He, these claims by Trump about January 6th, also false. Sarah Murray, uh, thanks so much uh, for that. Yeah. I mean, Sarah Murray, with even her previous statements, Sarah Murray is exactly one of it's, those accusers that no matter what Donald Trump says, you guys are going to go ahead and take a look at and try to figure out a way how to diminish no, and demean it's Mr. the Trump. scrutiny that comes with being a front runner when somebody. I don't see any other scrutiny being thrown at anybody to the extent that you're throwing it against Donald Trump. Uh, I'm sure you're going to have more uh, fact checks for us because there were more lies than I could count uh, said by the former president uh, this evening. A disturbing story out of Wisconsin, yet another unarmed black man shot. Disturbing video last night showed Jacob Blake unarmed being shot by police. A black man, father of three, shot in the back at close range in front of his three children. He was unarmed. President Trump still has not commented on what happened to Jacob Blake, the unarmed black man. We all saw it. A man who appears to be completely unarmed, an outrage that once again an unarmed black man. They said that Mr. Blake was not unarmed, that he had a knife in his possession. There's a glimpse of the knife, the far left is that knife uh, in his hand. Jacob Blake admits to DCI that he had a knife in his hand and that's what that is. It's not a cell phone, it's nothing else, he admits it. The knife itself is pictured there, it's a razor blade uh, uh, type knife. Shooting of Jacob Blake, uh, unarmed, a black man in the back, although he, he did have a, a knife in his car. There were more lies than I could count.